All right, everybody, what's going on? Welcome to today's edition of Swag Talk, the show we cover the swag inside and out. Of course, I'm your tour guide around the swag. See Wells coming at you, and it is week 12, man. This is the next to last week of the regular season, pretty much the last week for most teams. Um, we have two games next week, and then the swag championship after that, the celebration bowl following that. So not a lot of football left, man. Did, did, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got this, like, your last full week of football um, uh, before it go bye-bye. So um, still got a lot to lot on the line in the West, man, on the West side. Still, you know, still have to determine the West side champ. Um, PV wins this weekend. They are the West Division champ. Um, if they don't, then that opens the door up for TSU, Southern, Alcorn, if they, you know, if they pull an upset. So it's still a lot of um lot 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 left on the line. So um you know these games are very very important. You know JSU clinched the East last week, so they you know they they chilling waiting for whoever gonna come to the vet to face them. Uh, this you know that for the swag championship. So um as usual, man, you can check out the socials on the screen. Uh, Facebook is Swag Talk, Instagram Swag Talk, Twitter Swag Talk seventy six. Um, if you love to show a little love to the show, you get the cash up. Uh, dollar sign swag talk uh, like the video share them hit that notification bell to be alerted to anything that I drop um, with basketball season coming up I'll probably do a few videos here and now um, so y'all make sure y'all check those out whenever they drop hit the notification bell to catch those and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already if you have man thank you I appreciate it uh, tell somebody else to subscribe oh um, man we're trying to get to 800 so y'all help me you know, help me get down um, let's, let's go ahead and keep on doing what we do Keep these numbers going, man. Thank y'all for supporting and love, man. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Um, before we get started with the previews, man, I want to shout out TSU basketball team. Um, Sunday they picked up a, a, another another victory for the SWAC in the uh, SWAC Pac-12 Legacy Challenge. Um, nice, nice victory for for TSU. They beat Arizona State 67-66 at home. And that just goes to show you, man. Like I said before, you know we need home games, man. I know, I know, most teams need those games for money, but we need to get some games at home, whether they, you know, high major teams, mid major, you know, teams on our, on, you know, considered low major or whatever. Um, we need home games, man, because things happen when you play at home, and you know it helps a lot. So salute the Grambling for winning a game in this series. Salute the TSU for winning the game this series. So the all corn for picking up a big non-conference victory. And hopefully that's not the end of these non-conference wins, you know, as, as we make our way to war conference play. Um, it'd be nice to see more people pick up some some more victories. So um, TSU doing what TSU do, pick up victories. Um, you know, nice, nice victories, non-conference. So great win for the Tigers. Um, you know, they're a basketball school, so that's, you know, <laughs> it's not even a surprise. Um, let's get into football, man. This this is you know this is the reason why we why we're here right now, and you know we're gonna go ahead and talk about these last few games, and they are big. Um, they you know they there's a, like I said before, there's a lot on the line for 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 multiple schools, even schools that aren't playing this week. Um, there there are some important things that 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 can be determined by these games taking place. So. Um, the first game I want to talk about is probably the most important game of the week. Um, that's not the game of the week, and that's Prairie View at Valley. Um, that game is is um, uh, where is that game is scheduled for one. Uh, this is one a.m. <laughs> this game, I think, this is a one o'clock kickoff or two o'clock. I I uh, I get the actual time because the swag schedule says 1 a.m. So if if PV and Valley playing at 1 a.m., man, count me in. Um, but this game is in Itabina. Um, you can catch it on the Valley Sports Network. Um, so make sure you know you check that out if you know you got a vested interest in this game. Y'all make sure y'all check that out um, because this this is a big game. So um, just gonna get the time time correct on this game uh, before we go any further. Uh, yeah, this game is scheduled for 1 p.m., so it's a 1 p.m. kickoff. So I uh, just wanted to make sure I had the right time. Uh, Valley, it, you know, they, they, they've had a rough go of it this season. You know, they, they haven't really uh, been able to get anything going. Um, they've battled some injuries and just some, uh, you know, just not really 
being productive offensively. Uh, defensively, they've been pretty steady. Um, not great numbers wise, but they will fight and claw and hit and do everything to keep themselves in games. But the offense kind of betrays them because they can't, they don't hit a lot of big plays. So it's just hard for them to be explosive. They don't score a lot of points. And, you know, that's just a tough, you know, that's just a tough thing. Now, playing at home, Valor's a little bit tougher at home than they are on the road. So you always have to take that into account. But Looking at the numbers for this game, Valley right now is last in the league in scoring offense at 13.2 points per game. Purdue is third at 32.1 points per game. Uh, the Panthers are seventh in scoring defense at 26.5 points per game. Uh, Valley is eighth, allowing 32.7 points per game. Uh, total offense, Purdue is third in total offense at 388 yards per game, um, 5.8 yards per play. They have 39 total touchdowns on the season. Valley is last in the league um, with 271 yards of offense per game. Uh, they average 4.3 yards per play, and they have 16 total touchdowns. Uh, total defense, Purview is sixth at 359 yards per game. They've allowed 32 touchdowns on the season, uh, and they've allowed 5.4 yards per play. Valley is last in defense at 455 yards per game. Uh, they've allowed 37 touchdowns and the opponents average 6.6 yards per play, which is the second most um, allowed in the league. Uh, rushing offense, Prairie View leads that by a big margin. They run for 236 yards per game, almost two, really 237 yards per game, and they average 5.2 yards per carry. Um, they've scored 27 touchdowns, which is the most by seven um, over Southern, who is second place in that number. Uh, Valley is... 10th in the league in rushing offense at 140 yards per game. Um, they average 3.8 yards per carry, and they have only five touchdowns on the ground. So, obviously, they don't score a lot of touchdowns, but they definitely have not been able to get the ball in the end zone on the ground. Um, they just haven't really been able to make things happen uh, when they run the football. Uh, rushing defense, uh, Prairie View um, is 8th in the league in rushing defense at 180 yards per game. Uh, they allow 4.5 yards per play, and they've they've allowed 19 touchdowns. Uh, Valley is sixth in the league in rushing defense at 143 yards per game, and they allow an average of 4.2 yards per carry and 13 touchdowns. Now, one thing Valley did well against Southern was stop the run. Uh, they held Southern to about 109 yards on the ground, which is by far one of their lowest margins. Um, so Valley will be aggressive against the run. They you know they got some guys that can be good run stoppers. Um, but, you know, when the team goes to the air, that's when, you know, the problems come in. Um, and Valley is right now, they're, they're struggling passing the ball. Um, they average 130 yards per game um, as an offense, and they have 11 touchdowns and seven interceptions. Um, Prairie View is actually not that far ahead of them. They're 10th in the league. Uh, they average 151 yards per game. They have 12 touchdowns and six interceptions now. Six of those touchdowns came last week against Pine Bluff, so they, you know, they doubled their touchdown mark in one game. So, um, Prairie View has not been a team that needs to throw the ball a lot, um, but last week they definitely did a good job of, you know, being productive and efficient with their passing game. Uh, Valley is last in the league in passing offense at 312 yards per game. They um, allow 24 touchdowns and they have six interceptions. Prairie View is second in passing defense at 179 yards per game. They will have 13 touchdowns, and they have nine interceptions. Uh, Prairie View is first in the league in sacks allowed at 12. Uh, Valley is 11th in the league in sacks allowed at 33. Um, a lot of that is, you know, they have quarterbacks that run a lot, um, so they do take some sacks. Um, they also have, you know, been having trouble with the offensive line being banged up and, they, you know, the quarterbacks don't always get rid of the ball when they need to. So they, you know, they can be uh, susceptible to pressure. Uh, they gave a five sacks last week. So that's definitely, if you're Prairie View defense, you're definitely um, licking your chops. Um, Prairie View is fifth in the league in sacks by their defense at 23. And Valley is 11th at 16. So, that you know, to say Valley has, you know, a couple guys like Jalen Bell and uh, Ronnie Thomas, that can make, you know, that can make some plays on the, on, on, at the um, line of scrimmage on the defensive line. They don't really get a lot of pressure. Um, they're more of a team that sells out to stop the run. Um, you can go up top on them. The corners aren't that big. But for this game, I think Prairie is going to do 
what they do, and that's run the football. I don't think they're going to deviate too much from that. I think they're going to run it until they can't run it anymore. Uh, previous third and first downs uh, at 20.3 first downs per game. Valley is 11th at 15.6. Uh, Purview defense allows 20.1 first downs per game, which is um, sixth. Valley's, Valley's defense allows 22.5 first downs per game, which is 10th. Uh, third down conversions, Prairie View is fourth at 40%. Prairie Valley is 10th at 29%. So, obviously, the offense just has a rough time being able to sustain drives. You know, I mean, they find themselves in some long down and distances sometimes. Or, you know, sometimes it's just they don't make the right call um, to be, you know, to make a play. Um, and they just, you know, they just aren't able to convert. Uh, third down defense, Prairie View is eighth in the league, allowing 40% conversion. Valley right behind them at ninth at 43.3%. Uh, fourth downs, Valley is actually second in the league, uh, converting 58% of their fourth downs. Prairie View is, is not that far behind them. Uh, they are fifth in the league at uh, right at 50%. Uh, third, fourth down defense, uh, Valley's opponents convert 47% on fourth downs. Uh, which would be um, ninth place. And um, Prairie View's opponents convert 35% on fourth down, which is third place. So, uh, like I said, this game is, is really not that difficult or complicated of a game. Um, this game re really will be dictated by what Prairie View does. I mean, if they come out and they do what they need to do, um, I think they find themselves in a good position. Uh, like I said, Valley's tough at home, so that's always going to be something that you have to navigate. But this running game of Prairie View led by Amar Antoine with 627 yards and six touchdowns. He averages 6.1 yards per carry. Jaden Stewart, 602 yards. He averages 5.7 yards per carry, and he has seven touchdowns. And then Trezon Connolly, the quarterback, has 12 touchdowns on the season. He averages 5.2 yards per carry, and he has 593 yards. So that's a three-headed monster that all of them touch the football at, at any given time. Um, and then you come off the bench with a kid like Connor Wisham, who's a freshman, um, right now, he's averaging 5.6 yards per carry with a touchdown and 229 yards. So they are not afraid to run the football. Um, all three of their top rushers have over 100, 100 carries apiece. So they, uh, like I said, they're not they're not afraid to run the football, and they will run it. Um, you have to force them to throw. Um, they haven't been that bad throwing the ball. Connolly's converted, completing 60% of his passes. Um, he's 115 or 193. Uh, he has 11 touchdowns and five interceptions on the season, uh, 1,380 yards. Uh, the longest pass play on the season for them is 45 yards. So they they have guys that can be deep threats, uh, guys like Jalen Howard, um, who right now has uh, 14 catches for 13, 313 yards and three touchdowns, and he's averaging 22 yards per catch. That's a big-time deep threat. Uh, Chris Heron right now is the leading rec receiver with 21 catches for 281 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Ty Holden, 15 catches, 164 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Kyle Ricks is the last receiver in double digits with 10 for 142 yards and one touchdown. Defensively, uh, the Panthers are led in tackles by uh, Keyshawn Johnson uh, Warren with 68, Warren Shanko with 57, and Jesse Evans with 53. Uh, Evans also leads the defense with 12 tackles for loss. Johnson, 10, 11. Uh, Reese, 5.5. James, 5.5. Uh, sacks. Johnson leads the, the team with five sacks. Evans has three. Uh, James has two along with Jones. He also has two uh, interceptions. Logan Jackson and Gerald Smith have two interceptions apiece for the team lead. So, um, like I said, this team is, you know, they're playing, you know, they're, they're, they're back on stride. I mean, they had a nice bounce back win against, against Pine Bluff. You know, they took a little hit early. Um, but they found their way back into the game, and, you know, they dominated from there. Um, I think, like I said, I think this game is is all dictated on how they play. Uh, Valley, um, right now I know I know um, they're pretty banged up offensively. Uh, Caleb Johnson did not play against Southern, but he, he has 524 yards on the season and two touchdowns. Um, Jacoby Thomas has 10, uh, 30, 337 yards and two touchdowns, 5.2 yards per carry. Um, Jamari Jones, who had been playing quarterback, but he's out. Um, he had 207 yards, and Jelani Easton has 148 yards. Um, and he's averaging 4.2 yards per carry. So you still have a quarterback that can run, and, you know, they're going to need that in this offense. But Valley, to me, has to stretch the field more when they pass the ball. They do a lot of 
horizontal passing, man. They, you know, they try to get the ball out in space for their guys to make plays. But, you know, if they don't get anything, then you're looking at, you know, long yardage situations. So I think that they would, it would be beneficial for them to kind of try to stretch the field a little bit and work the middle of the field because I don't think I've seen them work the middle of the field too much at all this season. Um, Eason, right now he is 51 of 110 for uh, 478 yards. He has three touchdowns and four interceptions. Uh, just for the record, Jones is 61 for 112. Um, he has eight touchdowns and three interceptions, 795 yards. So um, right now, uh, Easton's only completing 46% of his passes. So that's definitely a number that, you know, I mean, obviously with the last game, you want to definitely see that number be a lot better. Um, if the Delta Devils want to have a chance. Uh, Ja'Cory Rankin has 27 catches to lead the team with 359 yards and five touchdowns. Sylvester Campbell, 12 for 109 and three touchdowns. Uh, Johnson, 11 for 141. Uh, Wagner, 10 for 112. Um, Gene, 10 for 70. And um, Hobson has also 10 catches for 46 yards. So, obviously, you know, this team doesn't really throw the ball that much. Um, the numbers aren't that great. But they're going to have to be able to find something to slow this Prairie View defense down. They're going to have to try to run the ball to keep Prairie View off the field. Um, they're going to have to control this game uh, time of possession-wise. Martin leads the defense with 54 tackles. Thomas, 52. Uh, Reed, 48. Uh, Thomas leads the team with 16 tackles for loss. Bell, 10 and a half. Sacks, Thomas, 8 and a half. Bell, 4 and a half. Uh, interceptions, uh, Lee, and Ale Lee, Alexander, and Lindsey, they all have two interceptions. Um, they combine for those six interceptions that this team has. So um, basically, I, like I said, you know, I think if you're counting on per, on Valley to win this game, I think you're going to be disappointed. Um, and your team probably should have did the job themselves so you wouldn't have to pull for a team like Valley um, at this late in the season. So I think Prairie View will win this game. They're going to avenge that loss that they took to, to Valley last year uh, by a score of 38 to 10. I just think this offense – for Prairie View moves the ball so well on the ground. They're going to be challenged by Valley's run defense, but I think, you know, because they are so they are so steadfast and want to run the football, they're going to run it until it, it clicks for them. And I think that's what's going to happen in this game. Eventually, Valley's going to wear down, and, and Prairie View will be able to hit some plays and, and, and get out of there with a victory and wrap up the division. So I think that, you know, it's tough if you're a fan pulling for Valley, but I, I don't really see that happening. So, um maybe next year for your team if you're not Prairie View. Um, the next game we're going to cover is Texas Southern at Alabama A&M. Again, this is um, a team who is fighting for their lives in the West Division. You know, so they, they'll be playing at 1 o'clock the same time Valley, Prairie View plays Valley. So, you know, they, there's no scoreboard watching really, you know, because you got to focus on the game. But uh, this is also a 1 o'clock kickoff. And this is the HBCU goal game of the week. So you may definitely make sure to check that out. Um this game, I think early in the season, I would have went one way. Um, now I think I might go another way. But I, I think AM is still, you know, they're, they're still trying to find their footing. I mean, obviously, this is the last game of the season. So, um, you know, if you haven't found your footing yet, then you're just not going to find it. But they have been an inconsistent team. Uh, I think they've had some games where they played well on offense. Uh, the defense hasn't been as bad as they have been in previous years but they're still not, you know, they're not great. Um, so they, you know, they, they can be, you know, and I mean, they can be dangerous because of some of the weapons that they have, but um, they just have not really struck me as a team to really just, you know, be ooh about. Uh, Texas Southern offensively, you know, last week was their best offensive output in quite some time, um, points and yardage-wise. But they, you know, they, they have been a team that has been carried by the defense this season. Uh, TSU defense has probably been the most improved defense in the conference easily. Um, they, you know, they've been a big factor in, in this team winning games. And, you know, I think they'll be a big factor in this game. Uh, TSU comes in this game fourth in the league in scoring offense at 26.2 points per game. Uh, the Bulldogs are 10th at 20.1 points per game. Uh, Texas Southern is sixth in scoring, off, scoring defense at 254 points per game. Uh, AM is 10th at 33.3 points per game allowed. Uh, total offense, Texas Southern is 8th in the league in total offense at 337 yards per game. 
Oh, they got 29 touchdowns on the season. They average 5.1 yards per play. Alabama and them is fifth in total offense at 364.8 yards per game, and they have 24 touchdowns, and they also average 5.1 yards per play. So um, both teams have been, you know, inconsistent. You know, they, they both have guys that can throw the ball. Uh, the, the court, they have quarterbacks that can run it, and they have, you know, good backs in the backfield, but neither team has really been able to find their stride this season offensively. Total defense, Texas Southern is eighth in total defense at 391 yards per game. Uh, they allow 5.6 yards per play, and they have allowed 32 touchdowns. Uh, a and is seventh at 378 yards per game. They allow 5.7 yards per play, and they have allowed 41 touchdowns. Uh, rushing offense, Texas Southern is fifth, fourth in the league at 172 yards per game. Uh, they have uh, 18 touchdowns, and they average 4.2 yards per carry. a and is sixth at 149 yards per game. They have 14 touchdowns and they average 3.8 yards per carry. Russian defense, a and is seventh in Russian defense at 149 yards per game. Uh, they've allowed 17 touchdowns, and they allow 4.3 yards per carry. Texas Southern is 10th in the league at 205 yards per game, and they allow 4.7 yards per carry and 16 touchdowns. Uh, passing offense, Alabama a and is is um, – Fourth in the league in passing offense at 215 yards per game. Uh, they have 10 touchdowns and 13 interceptions. That's been their downfall um, is turnovers. The team turns the ball over a lot. Um, so that if that's one Achilles heel for the offense and one thing that slowed down the growth of this offense is turnovers. Uh, Texas Southern is, is um, ninth in the league in passing offense, which is definitely a surprise to me. Um, 164 yards per game. They have 11 touchdowns and six interceptions on the season. Uh, passing defense, TSU is fourth in the league in passing defense at 16, 185 yards per game. They have 16 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. Those 14 interceptions lead the league um, by three. So they definitely have guys like Isaiah Hamilton, who is a pick six machine, man. If he gets the ball in his hands, he's going to score. Um, he look, He's one of those guys who definitely looks to turn off defense and offense. So if he gets a pick, he's going to try to score. Uh, this team has been really good in the past game on defense. Uh, Alabama A&M is 11th in passing offense, passing defense at 228 yards per game, um, and they have allowed 24 touchdowns, but they have nine interceptions. So they've done a pretty decent job with forcing turnovers as well. So th that can definitely be a factor in this game. Um, sacks allowed, A&M is 7th at 23. Uh, Texas Southern is 4th at 19. So um, – they both do a pretty decent job of protecting the quarterback. Um, they're pretty much both in the middle of that number. Uh, Sacks by their defense, TSU has 21, um, which is seventh, and AM has 19, which is eighth. So they, again, kind of similar. Um, first downs, Texas Southern is fourth in first downs at 20. Oh, excuse me. That's, that's the wrong thing. Uh, Texas Southern is. Um, Eighth in the league in first downs at 18.3 first downs per game. Uh, A&M is fourth at 20.1 first downs per game. Alabama A&M is eighth in opponent first downs at 20.7. Texas Southern is seventh at 20.2. Third down conversion, TSU is converting 32.3% on third downs, which is eighth place. Uh, A&M is 11th at 27.27. Uh, on third down. So both teams kind of struggling on third downs, which is also a reason why these offenses aren't putting up better numbers. Texas Southern defense, though, they they allow opponents to convert 33% on third downs, which is four, third in the league. So they do a good job of getting off the field on defense for sure. Um, the Bulldogs are 10th at 44.1%. So that's something, you know, I think if TSU can get, extend, the, extend their drive on third down, uh, that'll get them a good chance in this game. Um, oh, I never changed my balance. Sorry. Um, fourth downs, uh, Texas Southern is 10th in the league in fourth down percentage at 36.8. About uh, Alabama A&M is fourth at 50% even. Um, they've they've gone for it 30 times on fourth down, so that's more. That's nine more than the second place team in in terms of most fourth down attempts. So they're not afraid to go for it on fourth down. You know wherever it's at on the field, 
So that's something, you know, if you TSU and you get them in a third and medium, a uh, third and short, and they don't get it, you definitely want to be aware that they're probably going to go for it on fourth down. So um, the fact that they convert 50% of those means, you know, they definitely do a pretty good job of, of you know, picking up that fourth down and keeping the drives going that way. But um, so don't get happy if you stop them on third down because they can convert on fourth down. Uh, Texas Southern, they um, – they convert 36.8% uh, on, on fourth down, which is 10th place. Uh, opponents for Alabama A&M convert 57% on fourth downs. Um, so they they um, they don't really stop. They don't get really, don't really get a lot of stops on third or fourth down. Um, that's last in the league. Texas Southern's opponents, um, they are first in fourth down percentage at 31.8. And their opponents have attempted 22 fourth downs on the season, which is the third most. So they faced a good number of third or fourth downs, but they've done a good job of turning teams away in that in that in that situation. Um in the visit, Texas Southern is led in rushing right now by Ladarius Owens with 644 yards, uh 5.5 yards per carry and five touchdowns. Andrew Biden 427 yards, um four touchdowns, 3.9 yards per carry and Jacory Howard uh 408 yards at 4.7 yards per carry and six touchdowns again. Uh, multiple guys that can run the football, and they all are pretty explosive, or at least they, you know, they can make some big plays for your offense. Uh, Andrew Body is 133 of 235 passing, um, 1,616 yards, 11 touchdowns, six interceptions, completing 57% of his passes. Um, I, I, I still think the passing game probably can be a little bit more explosive, um, but they just, you know, they have some young receivers and they haven't really been able to take that next step yet. But Derek Morton leads the defense with 30, I mean, leads the offense with 31 catches for 481 yards and one touchdown. Uh, Shane, 22 catches, 175 yards, two touchdowns. A.J. Bennett, 17 catches, 216 yards and four touchdowns. So those are the three guys that really get the bulk of the, 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 the bulk of the targets. For this offense, but they have a lot of guys that have caught a pass on the season, so they're not afraid to play a bunch of guys. But those are the three guys that really make the plays for them through the air. Uh, Jacob Williams leads the defense with 62 tackles, Tariq Cooper 57 uh, tackles for loss, uh, Aikens eight and a half, Williams six, and Pippins with six uh, sacks, Anderson three and a half, Aikens three interceptions. Isaiah Hamilton leads the defense with four interceptions. Uh, like I said, he's a guy that's definitely going to try to take it back if he gets it in his hands. So um, if you're a and you definitely want to be careful when you throw to his side of the field um, because he's looming and he's definitely looking to make a play um, and, and, and turn the game in TSU's favor. Uh, Donovan Eaglin is the lead in rusher for Alabama A&M at 763 yards. Uh, he averages five yards per carry and six touchdowns. Been kind of quiet the last couple of weeks, so – um, you might you might want to expect him to have a, a, a big game. If he has a good game, uh, a and has a chance in this game. Um, Langford is second in the team on the team with 207 yards and a touchdown. Jimerson, 197 and three touchdowns. He's averaging 4.4 yards per carry. The passing game, they've been back and forth with Langford and Casey. Uh, Langford is 104, 190. Five touchdowns, seven interceptions. He averages uh, 55% completion rate. Uh, 1,139 1, yards. Uh, Quincy Casey, 77 of 130, five touchdowns and six interceptions, 984 yards, and completes 59% of his passes. So they both, you know, have interception issues. So turnovers is definitely going to be something that can really hamper them in this game if they turn the ball over. And they've had games where they've turned it over uh, quite a bit, so they need to be careful with that. Uh, Isaiah Cox leads the, re the receivers with 31 catches for 406 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, Cameron Young, 26 for third for 302 touchdowns. Uh, Keenan Hambrick, 23 for 231 and two touchdowns. Terrell Gardner, 23 catches 293 yards on the season. Um, Brian Jenkins Jr., 18 catches for 142 yards. On so that you know they they're spreading the ball around. Uh, Cox is obviously the guy right now who. Gets the, gets the most targets for the offense. Uh, uh, tackles, Dre Terry leads the defense with 69. Moses Douglas, 57. Uh, tackles for loss. Hayes, 15 to lead the team. Terry with 11. 
Sachs, Hayes, and Thomas Douglas and Jabron McNeil each have three to lead the defense. Uh, Rice and Douglas both have two interceptions to lead the team. Again, I think, you know, this tissue offense, like I said, they haven't been great this season, but they've been able to make some things happen. Um, you know, they've been able to keep themselves moving. Um, even when they don't score, they've been able to move the ball. But I think they're going to be challenged and them's going to, you know, going to come out and play hard. You know, this, this is the last game at home, the last game of the season. They're going to, you know, try to go out with a fight. But I think TSU will, will finish this season strong, you know, and finish probably no worse than second place, which is definitely a, a good thing for a team that was picked last uh, by the media coming into the season. So I like TSU to win this game by a score of 27 to 20. Um, I, I think Alabama and them can give them a go. I think this is going to be a tight game. I think this probably be a fourth quarter type of game um, that either team can win. So I like TSU, though. I like them to finish this season strong. Um, and them drops another tough one on the season. Uh, the next game we have is Jackson State at Alcorn. Um, everybody is already saying, you know, if you're not there now, you're probably not going to get on campus at Alcorn. It's going to be packed. Great atmosphere. Uh, these two teams obviously are huge rivals. And, you know, they're going to, you know, they're going to go at it. Um, you know, the, uh, Shadur got banged up against AM, but they say he's good to go. So, you know, I think, you know, how much he runs in this game um, probably would be something to take a look at, uh, making sure that he does get down and don't take those unnecessary hits. Um, for a guy his caliber, he doesn't need to be taking hits like that um, in, in any game, especially with so much on the line after this game. Uh, you want to be able to make sure that your guy is protected and and he makes the plays that the offense needs because the offense goes with him. Um, but this JSU team, obviously, they're number one in almost everything. Um, they've been number one in almost everything all year. Um, all corn. Finally, you know, they, they snapped that three-game losing streak last week against Prairie View. Um, and this past week, they won their second game in a row. So they're running the ball well. Um, they're playing a young freshman quarterback. Right now in the passing game, just has not been there. And that's a dangerous combination for a, a team facing the all defense like Jackson State. Um, I think Alcorn with, you know, Howard, uh, Duffy, and Leatherwood have some good backs. But JSU doesn't give up a lot on the ground. So I, I anticipate a lot of pressure being put on the quarterback in this game. But looking at the numbers, Jackson State leads the league with 38.9 points per game. Um, Alcorn, they are – Ninth in the league, they average 21 and a half points per game. Alcorn gives up 25 points per game, which is fifth. And Jackson State only allows 9.8 points per game, which is first. Uh, total offense, Jackson State leads the league with 467 yards per game. They have 47 touchdowns, which is the most by uh, eight over the second place team. Um, they average 6.3 yards per play. Alcorn on offense, they are seventh in the league at 351 yards per game. They have 24 touchdowns and 5.2 yards per play. Uh, total defense, all corners is fifth at 332 yards per game. Uh, 30 touchdowns allowed, 5.1 yards per play allowed. Jackson State leads the league with 213 yards per game. Uh, 11 touchdowns allowed, 3.4 yards per play. Rushing offense, and this is, like I said, the running game for, for uh, JSU has been a big, big factor in this offense. Uh, they're fifth in rushing at 171 yards per game. They have 14 touchdowns, and uh, they average 4.9 yards per carry. Alcorn, um, they run the ball a lot. Uh, they're second in the league in, in carries. Um, Jarvion Howard had 32 carries last week, so they're not afraid to, you know, put that backpack on him and, and, and make him go. Um, they're third in rushing offense at 885 yards per game, and they average 4.3 yards per carry with 15 touchdowns. Uh, rushing defense, Jackson State is first at 98.2. Yards per game on the ground. They've only allowed five touchdowns, and opponents run the ball for 2.8 yards per carry. Uh, Alcorn is fifth at 141 yards per game. Uh, they allow 17 touchdowns and 3.7 yards per carry. So their defense is is you know their defense is tough. Um, they don't necessarily have a bunch of guys you know like those individual guys. They play pretty good team defense. Um, I mean, obviously, yeah, Cheryless and Kinsler. Um, two of the top guys, Ellis as well. You know, they have guys. Don't, I'm not saying they don't have guys, but they do it more of a team team type of defense. You look at their tackles for loss and sacks, it's a lot of guys that register those numbers. So 
they do a good job of swarming the ball and making it tough to run. Jackson State definitely does the same. Uh, JSU leads the league in passing offense at 296 yards per game, uh, 33 touchdowns and five interceptions. All corn right now, they're eighth in the league, uh, averaging 165 yards per game through the air. Uh, they have only nine touchdowns, and they've thrown nine interceptions. So they have had some turnover issues. Uh, obviously, uh, they've had a couple of three interception games as an offense, so that definitely would hurt you um, when you look at the numbers that way. Uh, the last two weeks, the passing game hasn't really been clicking. Um, a lot of that is due to a young guy playing you know, and learning, and uh, he just hasn't been able to make things happen through the air. Uh, passing defense, Jackson State leads that as well with 115 yards through the air allowed, uh, six touchdowns and eight interceptions. Alcorn, they are fifth in the league in passing defense at 191 yards per game. They allow 13 touchdowns, and they have seven interceptions. And this Alcorn defense can get to the quarterback. The Jackson State defense can get to the quarterback. Uh, they're two and three in sacks um, by their defense. JSU has 34 sacks. Alcorn has 33. So they both can get pressure on the quarterback um, really well. Um, Jackson State is second in sacks allowed at 15. Alcorn is eighth in sacks allowed at 24. So, you know, Alcorn kind of struggles with protecting the quarterback. And, you know, we have a young quarterback. You know, he tends to hold the ball a little bit too long. So that can be a recipe for a disaster against a defense that can get pressure. But Alcorn is going to bring the pressure too. So, you know, I think both – I think you play quarterback in this game, you're going to be under, 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 under pressure. You're going to get a lot of heat. So um, you really want to take care of the football um, and don't, you know, a game like this is fumbles are, are, are easy to come by uh, with so many guys swarming to the to the quarterback. Uh, Jackson State leads the league in first downs at 24.7. Uh, all corn, they are sixth in the league at 18.7 first downs per game. All corn's opponents average 17.7 first downs per game. Jackson State is first. At 12.4, Alcorn is third. Uh, third down conversions, Jackson State converts 42% on third down, which is second place. Alcorn converts 36.8, which is seventh place. Uh, Alcorn on defense, they are sixth at 36.2% on third down. Uh, Jackson State is, is first at 22% on third down. So, it's, you know, really tough to convert those third downs against JSU. Uh, fourth down offense, Jackson State is – Ninth in the league, they convert 38%. Eight of 21, they do attempt a lot of third down, fourth down conversions. Uh, they have the second most uh, fourth down attempts in the league. Alcorn is third. They convert 53% uh, on, th on fourth down, uh, eight of 15. Uh, Jackson State opponents convert 42% on fourth down, which is second, 11 of 26. Alcorn's opponents convert 43%. Um, uh, let, let me get my, this number in order. Uh, Jackson State is sixth in, 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 in fourth down conversion at 42.3% allowed. Alcorn is fifth at 43.8%. Um, looking at some of the numbers, I really Jackson State is led on the ground by uh, Savion Wilkerson. He has 976 yards on the season, knocking on 1,000 yards. Um, two backs over 1,000 yards in, in the swag is a good, a good thing for the run game. He averages 5.5 yards per carry. Marshall, 323 yards. Six and a half yards per carry. Uh, Wilkerson has seven touchdowns. Marshall one. Uh, Shador Sanders, 178 yards, five touchdowns. Uh, J.D. Martin, 156 yards and one touchdown. Uh, Sanders is 265 or 375, 71% completion rate, 2,862 yards, 31 touchdowns and five interceptions. Again, you know, he got banged up last week. Um, with, you know, they say he's good, but, you know, you, you never know. Um, how a guy is until he gets into action. Uh, hopefully he's healthy and, you know, he can play a, a really solid game for JSU because he is the stir, the stir. He is the straw that stirs that drink for JSU on offense. Uh, Shane Hooks, 51 catches, 575 yards, eight touchdowns. Dallas Daniels, 50 catches, 587 yards, and six touchdowns. Uh, Stevens, 30 catches, 317 yards, and three touchdowns. Uh, Coleman, 18 for 243. Gaines, 18 for 334. Uh, Wilkerson, 16 for 136. Powers, 15 for 120. Um, Martin, 13 for 119. Uh, Buckley, 12 for 96. Hunter, 11 for 91. Um, Davis, 10 for 52. Marshall, 10 for 50, 58. 
like I said, they they have a lot of guys that can get the ball, but Daniels and Hooks are really the guys that make the most of the plays. Um, defensively, they led in tackles by Aubrey Miller. Um, like I always say, that's an NFL guy, man. Anybody can tell me nothing different. I mean, you could, but I'm not going to listen. Um, <laughs> but I think he's a really, really solid linebacker, man. I think he's a, a hitter. Um, he, he's always around the ball, and he makes plays. Uh, Silman Craig, 51 tackles. Tackles for loss, Reagan, 10. Uh, Gaddy, 9. Sacks, Gaddy leaves with 5.5. Reagan, 4.5. Brown, 4.5. Uh, interceptions. Um, they all their interceptions are, are, are by different guys, so they just have you know they have ball hawks all over. So if you throw the ball, you need to be careful because they will pick it off. Um, Alcorn is led obviously by uh, Javion Howard with 1174 yards on the ground, averages 5.3 yards per carry and 11 touchdowns. Has over 200 carries on the season, um, so he's gonna get the ball. They're gonna feed him, and they're gonna feed him a lot. Nico Duffy. 335 yards, one touchdown. Leatherwood, uh, 301 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Trey Lawrence right now is is the quarterback uh, of record. Um, he has 19 completions, 50 attempts, um, one touchdown, one interception, 199 yards. Only completing 38% of his passes. Now, he hasn't really thrown a lot of passes in these games because they're uh, in the last two weeks, I don't think they've thrown for 100 yards combined. So that's definitely something to keep an eye out on. Um, you know, you really want to be careful with that um, because the the pressure is going to be the he's going to have to he's going to have to make plays. He's going to have to you know kind of get out of the pocket, extend some plays, and, and try to hit downfield. Um, you know, you have a guy like Juan Anthony with thirty catches for three hundred sixty six yards and two touchdowns. Uh, C.J. Bolar nineteen catches two hundred and four yards. Uh, Montario Hunt eighteen for three twenty seven and three touchdowns. Um, he averages 18 yards per catch. He's more of a deep guy. Um, Malik Rogers, 13 catches, 147 yards and a touchdown. So, you know, they have the, the receivers to make some plays. Quarterback has to get the ball to them. And this is a tough night for that to happen. Uh, Ellis leads the team with 70 tackles. Cherylis, 52. Uh, Kinsler, 51. Tackles for loss. Uh, Bailey with nine. Cherylis, eight and a half. Ellis, seven and a half. Webb, six and a half. Rice, six and a half. Um, Sacks. Bailey leads the defense with seven sacks, um, interceptions. Um, McCullum has two to lead the defense. I think this is going to be an exciting game. I mean, obviously, you know, with the crowd and everything, it's going to be it's going to be crazy. But I think you know, as long as JSU has a healthy Shadour Sanders, um, I think they'll win this game. Um, they'll 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 find a way to win this game. Um, if he if he's banged up. And the offense kind of struggles that opens the door for Alcorn. But JSU defense, I think, is more than capable of winning this game by themselves. But I think JSU wins this game by a score of 35 to 10. I think Alcorn is going to be tough. I don't think they're going to fold. But until they can throw, throw the ball effectively, um, that's going to be a, a problem for a team like that against a, a defense that does a really good job of stopping what you do well. So, um, I think Alcorn is going to fight, but I think JSU will win this game and finish with an undefeated regular season and get ready for the SWAC championship. Um, I forgot to say this game is a 2 o'clock kickoff on ESPN+, Plus, so don't don't worry. Don't forget about that. Um, our final game of the week is our game of the week, and that's the Florida Classic. Bethune Cookman and FAMU in Orlando. Also, um, uh, also a 2 o'clock kickoff. Um, that game is also – I'm assuming that game is a 1.30 kickoff on ESPN+. Plus. Um, so make sure you check that out. Games like this, obviously, you can toss the records out. Um, there's been, you know, multiple games where, where fam, you've been the better team and Bethune-Cookman won. Uh, Bethune-Cookman's been the better team and fam, you've won. Sometimes the better team wins. Um, you've had barn burners. You've had blowouts. You've had all kind of, you know, anything in between. So um, Bethune-Cookman – as bad as the season was last year, they had a really good early portion of this game. Um, they hit a big touchdown early. Um, they were in the game, third quarter, the wheels fell off. Um, this team is – offensively, this team is better than last season because they can run the ball well and they can throw it pretty effectively. Um, their defense has not been good. Um, they did have a really good game uh, last week on defense against Alcorn. Um they, you know, they gave up some yardage on the ground, 100, 126 yards, I believe, to um, 
Howard, but I think that they did a really good job defensively in that game, and that's probably one of the best defensive games they played all season. But their offense is is very capable of moving the ball up and down the field. Fam, you've been steady, man. They they haven't looked great. They haven't looked great, but they've won games and won them. You know, they won them in close fashion like last week. They won some comfortable games, you know, but they haven't really, you know, had that all three phases type of game where you look like a well-armed machine. Um, they still have some playoff hopes. Um, so this game is vital for them. You know, you can't drop – if they drop this game, they can kiss the playoffs goodbye. So if they want to have hold out any hope for the playoffs, they definitely need to win this game. So that's still a lot on the line besides the, the natural bragging rights of a rivalry game. Um, fam, you – Right now, they um, they are scoring 41 points per game. Uh, that's third in the league. Uh, Bethune Cookman is scoring 38 points per game, which is sixth in the league. The difference between these two teams is defensively. Bethune Cookman is last in defense. They allow 47 points per game. Uh, FAMU is fifth. They allow 35.6 points. Oh, oh my God! I read all the wrong stuff. Y'all, y'all forgive me, man. Right, let me let me start over. I need to. I need to. <laughs> I need to, to, to get myself right. All right, third, uh, points per game, fam, you, they average 24 points per game, which is sixth in the league, Bethune-Cookman 23.9, which is seventh in the league. Now, Bethune-Cookman does, they're still last in scoring defense at 39.3 points per game. Uh, fam, you is fourth at 23.2 points per game. Uh, total offense, Bethune-Cookman's offense has been pretty good this year. They're fourth in the league. In total offense at 374 yards per game. Uh, they have 5.8 yards per play, 27 touchdowns on the season. Uh, fam, you're not that far behind in sixth place with 360 yards per game, 26 touchdowns, and 5.1 yards per play. Uh, Bethune Cookman is 10th in total defense at 424 yards per game. Uh, they allow 6.1 yards per play, and they've allowed 44 touchdowns, which is the second most in the league um, behind Pine Bluff. FAMU is third in total defense at 321 yards per game. They allow five yards per play and 24 touchdowns. Bethune Cookman runs the ball pretty pretty well, um, 148 yards per game. They average 4.7 yards per carry and have 15 touchdowns. FAMU's run game has not been good this season. 101 yards per game on the ground, seven touchdowns, 3.1 yards per carry. Bethune Cookman defense can't stop the run, though, so. Um, a guy like A.J. Davis might can make some plays in this game, but Thune Cookman's defense um, is 11th in rushing defense at 225 yards per game. They allow 5.1 yards per carry and 26 touchdowns. Um, they are only one of only two teams that allow more than five yards per carry um, in the run game. Uh, FAMU is fourth in rushing defense at 129 yards per game, uh, four yards per carry even, and eight touchdowns. Uh, passing offense. Two and three in passing offense. Both teams can put the ball in the air. Um, FAMU is second at 258 yards per game, 19 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Uh, Bethune-Cookman, 226 yards, 12 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. So both teams have thrown a lot of interceptions this season. So, if you know, both teams have, you know, do have guys in the secondary that can make, make some interceptions. So I think that, you know, somebody's going to make a bad pass in this game. And, and that can be a game changer. Um, FAMU is sixth in the league in passing defense at 191 yards per game. They allow 16 touchdowns and nine interceptions. Uh, Bethune Cookman is eighth in the league in passing defense at 199 yards per game. Uh, they have 18 touchdowns and nine interceptions. Uh, FAMU has allowed um, 19 sacks on the season, which is third. Bethune Cookman has allowed 35, which is the most in the league. So they've done a, you know, they haven't really been able to protect the quarterback um, at all this season. And that bodes well if you, if you found you, because the Rattlers have 28 sacks on the season, which is fourth place. And they have some guys that can get to the quarterback. Uh, but Thune Cookman is 10th in, in sacks, uh, sacks by their defense at 17. So um, they haven't really generated a lot of pressure, but they've taken a lot of pressure. Uh, found you is second in, in first downs. Um, for their offense at 21.3. Bethune Cookman is seventh at 18.4. Uh, Bethune Cookman's opponents convert uh, have 23 first downs per game. That's last in the league. FAMU is fourth at 18.6. Third down conversions. FAMU converts 41% on, four, on third down. 
Um, you know, they don't run the ball really well, but they have guys in the passing game like Smith and Sharif who definitely can make those big third down catches um, anywhere on the field. Uh, but Thune Cookman, they are fourth, sixth in the league. They convert 38% on third downs. Um, but Thune Cookman's defense allows 47% on third downs, which is last in the league. Uh, FAMU's defense allows 35.6% uh, percent on, on third down, which is fifth. Uh, fourth down conversions, FAMU leads the league at 60%, 9 of 15. But Thune Cookman is seventh in the league at 8 of 18 for 44%. Uh, FAMU's opponents convert. Uh, 35% on, on fourth down, which is eighth place. But Thune Cookman's opponents convert 50% on, on fourth down, which is third place. So obviously, but Thune Cookman struggles mightily um, to get stops uh, on the on offense or extending drive on defense or extending drives on offense. They really had a rough go of it this season defensively. Um, uh, Jalen McLeod leads family with 355 yards and three touchdowns. Jennings, 296, and two touchdowns. Davis, 247 on the season. Uh, Musa is the leading passer, 210 of 374, uh, 19 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, 2,535 2, yards. He's completing 56% of his passes. When he's on, he's on, but he still has those moments where he kind of drifts into some bad habits, and um, he can make a bad throw or two, which can slow down uh, the offense moving the football. But – when he hits his guys, you know, and they can make some plays, you know, this offense is dangerous. Xavier Smith, 82 catches on the season, 948 yards. So he'll probably go over 1,000 yards this season um, in this game and 10 touchdowns. Um, Sharif, 45 catches, 588 yards and three touchdowns. Those are the two guys because other than that, um, Manigo and um, and Oxendine, they both had 18 catches on the season. But – uh, those two guys are the guys to look out for in the pass game. Uh, defensively, um, Isaiah Major leads the team with 76 tackles, Johnny Chaney 52. Uh, Land, 11 and a half tackles for loss. Major 10, Stevens 10. Uh, Stevens leads the team with eight sacks, Land, seven and a half. Uh, interceptions, uh, Morgan, three. Uh, Kendall Bowler with two. And looking at Bethune Cookman, their offense has been pretty good this season. You know, a lot of people didn't know what to expect from this offense, but um, they have a, a, a nice one two attack with Quayshawn Bird with 608 yards rushing, 6.2 yards per carry, five touchdowns. Uh, Jalen Jones, 513 yards, 4.6 yards per carry, and five touchdowns. Uh, Jones finally had took hold of the passing game, and they've taken off through the air um, 169 of 288. 2,103 yards, 12 touchdowns, six interceptions, completing 59% of his passes. When he goes to the air, he definitely likes to look at uh, Kamari Averett, who is hadn't had the best season this year, but he's he's come on strong late. Uh, three, 35 catches, 399 yards, and six touchdowns. Marcus Riley, 32 catches, 512 yards, and five touchdowns. Those are the two guys who definitely get the bulk of the targets. Uh, defensively, uh, Ratliff leads the team with 60 tackles, Lewis 55, Smith 50, uh, tackles for loss, McKenzie 7, Hampton 6.5, Loving 6. Uh, Walls has three sacks to lead the defense, Loving 2.5. Uh, Amari Hill Robinson leads the, leads the team with uh, three interceptions. And as I always say when I talk about Bethune Cookman um, and their, their team, um, Darnell Dees is, is definitely a weapon um, for them in the kick game. So you definitely uh, – he this he can make a big play in a game like this um, and, and kind of change the tide. But I like FAMU in this game. I think they have just been playing steady football. Um, they haven't been flashy. You know, they, they, you know, they've been up and down, but they always stay the course. And, they, you know, they make the main thing the main thing, which is winning. And, they you know, they are on an um, a, 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 a eight-game winning streak right now. So um, – they, you know, they can win nine in a row and find themselves, you know, looking at a playoff spot. Um, you know, it'll be all of the committee um, if they win this game. So there's still a lot, like I said, there's still a lot to play for FAMU. Uh, but Thune Cookman, man, this has been a rough season for them. Um, more so because, you know, the storms and, you know, playing so many games on the road and having to, you know, be away from school for a long time. And then this week passed, 
they had another storm come through, so they had to leave early to go to Alcorn. So, you know, this that team has been road warriors, but they survived. Um, and they've had a better season this season than their record indicates. So um, I think FAMU will win this game. I think Bethune Cooper going to fight like hell, though. I think they're going to I think they're going to give it a serious go. But I like FAMU in this game by a score of 28 to 14. I think it's going to be a close game to the second half. I think FAMU will find a way to uh, blow, you know, take take control of this game in the second half. And that's going to do it for today's show. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in as usual. Um, we'll be back on tomorrow with Swag Smoke uh, live at 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. And then Sunday we'll recap these games and maybe we'll have a, a, a full Swag Championship game by Sunday or we could have a situation where we have to wait till the next Saturday to determine uh, the, the Swag West champ. Who knows? But we'll, we'll, you know, we'll find that out um, a, as we go. Um, so that's going to do it for me, man. I'd like to thank y'all for tuning in, man. Y'all have a, a, a really good rest of your week, man. I think this, you know, this this is like one of my favorite times of the, of the year. Um, and, and you definitely can't go wrong with some good swag football with championships on the line. So I'd like to thank y'all for tuning in and make sure y'all Catch us on the on the rebound, man. We'll we'll see y'all later. Y'all have a good day, and I'm out. Peace. <laughs>